Hey guys, this is Caspi with Tape, and today you join me for episode 2 of Kerbal Rising. And today we start, of course, around Nebos with a brand new ship. This is the UFN Cyclops, a Cyclops class frigate. And it is, well, a much bigger ship than before. Of course, it's a frigate. It is capable of going interplanetary by itself. It has its own Kerbstein drive, and it will be accompanying our carrier today, since we are leaving Nebos to go and conquer new worlds. You can see how small it looks next to the carrier. It is much bigger than previous ships, but of course the carrier is colossal, and I thought this scale looked quite nice. So a frigate is pretty much the smallest real kind of interplanetary capable warship, but much bigger than the corvettes and skiffs from last time. And together they will head out to Duna, because we have more Kerbals to free. Now Duna, of course, was initially colonized by the Clothulians during their Road to Colonization program. Um, and then, of course, they went on to colonize Ike as well from that base. But once uh, Kerbin fell in the Great Nuclear War, the Nuclear Winter, the, uh, the communications and supply lines were cut with Duna, and it's sort of fallen into ruin. But there are still some diehard hangers on there, still trying to uh, maintain the glory of Twit John E. Um, but uh, yeah, we will be uh, freeing uh, the people here from the uh, horrific dictatorship that Twit John E. wrought. And our fleet is now arriving at Duna. Of course, the carrier loaded with the corvette, the skiff, and a landing crew, accompanied by the uh, frigate. And once in orbit of Duna, in a high orbit where we can use those Kerbstein drives, which allow us to go interplanetary very quickly, um, we start moving down towards Ike um, with our chemical engines. Um, nuclear engines, actually. They are fusion torches. You can see the, uh, the uh, thrust to weight ratio on the carrier is so low we can't throttle up very high with our frigate because that's such a massive ship. And the frigate actually does leap ahead. But we will be arriving at Ike, which is the first, the outer defenses of Duna, which uh, actually have some pretty nasty things waiting for us. Because of the slight disparity in thrust to weight ratio, the uh, frigate does arrive at Ike first and gets into orbit um, rather quickly. And then the carrier will be arriving in a second. Um, well, a few, actually literally two minutes after, because they are burned together does allow us to keep our fleets relatively close together, but uh, not, uh, it doesn't, uh, there's uh, there's a few problems with engines where they throttle slightly differently for various reactory reasons. But anyway, the fleet is in orbit of Ike now. And we need to prepare our warships to go and take out the orbital defenses of Ike. There aren't a ton of uh, ships around. The uh, glory days of the uh, of the Clothulian military have long gone, but they still have managed to marshal a frigate to defend Ike, and quite a nasty one as well, with a pair of rail guns. So our frigate is also armed with a uh, with a pair of rail guns, um, and also a couple of rather large anti-armor torpedoes, which should be able to do some serious damage. So we form up now with our corvette, get the skiff out. The skiff can actually come just uh, come out of the uh, carrier just to come totally flat because it's so small and the carrier is so huge. Um, the skiff is pretty much, I reckon, going to be cannon fodder for this battle since it has a 2.5 kilometer gun range, which against in a battle between frigates is not really very effective. But nonetheless, it will be useful um, <laughs> if only as target practice for our enemies. But if we form up now, you can actually uh, get a get up a bit of a look at the scale of the frigate over there. Still much bigger than the skiff, even from this distance. Um, rather terrifying, and hopefully rather deadly. So another burn yet again. <laughs> so it is quite a quite a challenge to go from Duna to uh, Ike and everything. Well, not a challenge. There's just a lot of burns involved. But we'll meet our enemy in the orbit of uh, in the orbit of Ike and take it out before it can get anywhere near our carrier. Our carrier, of course, is unarmed and undefended. Um, because it's, well, um, both Penguin and I got free carriers at the start, so they're unarmed. But future carriers will have a few, you know, guns on them just to fend off any enemies who might uh, come when it's undefended. Um, but for now, uh, it should be fine as long as we kill this guy first. So we get into range, coming into a 25 kilometer range. We're lining up, getting our ships ready. The UFN Cyclops preparing its torpedoes. We're going to hopefully get an early kill, so we um, lease one of these torpedoes. It's a 1.25 meter torpedo, so uh, extremely powerful. The ones from last episode were just 0.625 meters, so uh, rather small. But this should do some serious damage. So we try and line up, get as close as possible, get that intercept down. And uh, if we can get it down to, well, nothing, then hopefully we'll hit. But we are 25 kilometers away, so... Uh, 
it might be somewhat problematic. Additionally, obviously, this is a frigate we're going after, so it has some pretty serious weapons and long-range weapons. Those rail guns uh, have, a, have a range of um, 18 kilometers, so we're already taking fire, but they're not accurate enough to get us from uh, that kind of range. The laser, however, which it turned out the frigate had, is quite accurate and does start putting some hits down on our missile. But luckily it has very, very low damage, especially at range, so it's not really going to do anything. And there's a little hail of gunfire, I believe, but we just wing underneath the frigate. We'd scratch the freaking paint on that gun, but we totally missed. I turn around for another for another run, but it starts opening up uh, with its 20mm guns, I believe. They're 20mm guns, and the laser starts hitting us. Um, but uh, it looks like we're actually not going to be destroyed. We might get another hit on this, uh, on this dastardly frigate, but we wing past a, quite a clip and are now heading for our own fleet and uh, yeah the frigate now totally clued into our attack is turning to uh, get all of its weapons pointing optimally uh, which is not fantastic but I guess to be expected lets off a few more rounds at that missile even though it's going away clearly just annoyed at it um, as we loose the second missile the uh, first missile almost hits our skiff but luckily doesn't a little bit negligent on my part but uh, you know stuff happens so yes, our frigate of course carries two of these missiles. It's pretty lightly armed for a frigate. It doesn't have any point defense weapons. It just has those rail guns and these couple of missiles because, well, we had 16 points and that's all we could get. Ideally, that would have some 75 millimeter guns on it as well, but we don't. 10 points, of course, because I have six points this turn and 10 points at the end of last turn. I get 10 points where Penguin had five because um, he gets the first uh, turn, which gives him an advantage. So this balances my advantage, just giving me a few more points on the first turn for the people who are asking. Anyway, back to the battle. We're flying in, we're uh, taking some 20mm fire. Very inaccurate though, since those guns are really, well, just inaccurate. And we miss by a little more this time, which is not fantastic. We do, however, have enough fuel to turn around and take another shot, but it's unlikely we'll score a kill. So it's looking like we're gonna have to do this with guns, which isn't what I really wanted, because I might lose well, I might lose a ship, and I might lose a frigate, and that frigate is quite a big investment for me at this time. 16 points is a lot, and we really need that frigate for, you know, defending the skies and taking skies more to defend, freeing people, basically. We, you know, it's, it's harming our chance at freedom. <laughs> anyway, we miss again, and I try and take a third uh, run, but I run out of fuel, and the missile is just going to drift back towards us. Um, so now it's gun time. You can see uh, rounds already flying. There'll be a long-range kind of joust between the rail guns. Uh, they're just 55mm rail guns, and they uh, have pretty short barrels. I guess rails, but you know what I mean when I say barrel. Um, so they're not super accurate, so we should be okay. But I'm going to move in my smaller ships first, partly just to be cannon fodder, and partly just to get into range of their guns. The um, Beluga-class Corvette has a 8km range, and this only has a 2.5km range, but if we can get in close, we could do some damage. You can see uh, my uh, frigate has been fired. Well, there we go fires a uh, railgun round, but uh, does does not seem to hit. Um, we're getting a little bit scared though, so I am trying to move in quite quickly now to try and avoid the fire of um, this enemy frigate, because those railgun rounds, if they hit, are going to do a lot of damage. They're moving incredibly quickly. I don't want to leave the frigate behind though, so we are going to move that in. Um, I'm really hoping that I do manage to take out this frigate by sniping it before I have to go to close range guns, but... Uh, yeah, it's not looking fantastic. And the uh, frigate, uh, the corvette even, takes its first hit. It only loses a radiator, but still worrying that the uh, accuracy is getting pretty high now. We would rather, well, rather like to not lose a ship. What we get with the 8 kilometers, we start firing our 30 millimeters, trying to do our first little bits of damage to this enemy frigate. Um, but still, we're not in a particularly accurate, uh, kind of accurate distance. We actually take a railgun around there to the skiff, but inexplicably it survives. And uh, still, with uh, no damage to anyone that I can see, um, we're closing to 5 kilometers when I take a rail, well, when the corvette takes a railgun round to the face and is destroyed, but it's still firing. And then I realize, of course, it has missiles in it, so I lose, lose those missiles. Um, and get them prepared. They're only small missiles, but they do have powerful warheads. They could do some serious damage to that um, frigate if we get a good hit. So, 
I'm going to fire that ammo now since I still have control over the missiles, if not over the Corvette. And we're heading in now. The laser actually looks distracted by trying to finish off the Corvette, which is taking more and more damage, which seems a little cruel considering the crew is dead now. But anyway, we get the missile trying to... We're trying to line it up, but I'm panicking a bit as uh, my first ship has died and our crew is dead. Um, and I don't have a ton of time to actually line it up. But hopefully I'll be able to score a hit. However, my hopes are kind of dashed as I fly past and don't really have time to get a second run. I do have one more torpedo though, and I am determined to get a hit with it because we need to take this frigate down, and if it does damage to more of my ships, we're gonna have serious problem serious problems holding the skies of Duna. But sadly, once again, it gets so close and just misses. That profile of that ship is very small for a frigate, and it's really hard to hit with a missile. But I haven't been flying particularly well today, so this is largely on me. But still, I'm uh well, very disheartened by that. We do try and take another run, but it, it, it doesn't hit, and I think it even gets destroyed by guns, maybe. But then I notice that the, uh, well, the frigate is literally being lit up, and that is by the collisions of 20mm fire. The skiff has managed to enter range with two 20mm chain guns. Those aren't very big rounds, but they fire very frequently. If I can get, and if I can get close to that frigate, I could do some serious damage. I didn't think I'd get in this close, but this is moving incredibly quickly, despite its engine actually being at about half power because apparently I turned off one of the nuclear reactors and couldn't figure out how to turn it back on. Um, <laughs> we've gotten pretty far in science, not that far. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, yes, so you can see we're getting a lot of hits on it now. Some flares come off the, uh, off the frigate now. We must have done some damage, and there are some minor explosions, and it looks like we'll be able to do some serious damage. And if we can finish it maybe with a railgun round, which, it seems to, which are coming pretty close to it now. We just saw one whip past it, but... Um, but now, yeah, but yes, the, the, the frigate is exploding, you can see debris all around it. And we're starting to leave range, but I'm going to try and slow down and put fire on it for as long as possible, because it seems really indifferent towards this frigate. If I, to the skiff even, if I were the frigate, I would be lighting up the skiff like hell. But uh, yes, I am doing some serious damage, and it's looking rather good. Um, it looks like we will be leaving range soon, and we're definitely le lo left accuracy range. Um, uh, but we can see now the... Uh, the, the, our frigate is moving in. It is taking fire from lasers and 20 millimeters and maybe even a few rail guns, although, although the rail gun does seem distracted. Um, although this has been taking hits, I don't think the frigate is very good at picking a target and sticking to it. Um, with Duna hanging in the background now, though, it's looking like the battle may be ours. Um, the enemy frigate can't seem to focus on a target and um, is taking a lot of fire. Uh, from, well, from a lot of things. A railgun round strikes now and seems to do a lot of damage mixed with that 20mm fire. It's hard to tell which ship is doing the most damage, the uh, skiff or the frigate, but nonetheless, the enemy frigate pops and explodes. The crew survives, luckily. We don't want to kill people we don't have to kill, but uh, yes, the frigate is dead and the air, the uh, orbital space around Ike is ours. After a bit of a, bit of a tense battle, a bit of a, a, bit of a loss of uh, life, we are able to call Ike ours, at least the space around it. The frigate has taken some minor damage. You can see maybe some of those smaller rounds, or maybe even a uh, maybe even a railgun round took out one of the caps of the cooling tubes in front of the engines, which is fairly superficial. But if a round gets inside one of those cooling tubes and destroys a bunch of the, radi the radiators, that could be a serious problem for cooling our reactor. Um, but other than that, it's looking pretty good. We expended a lot of weaponry to do that, but we have taken down the enemy frigate. A beastly ship. Whoever built that, congratulations. That was terrifying. Um, but anyway, now we must move on to the next phase of the mission. Getting our ground crew ready for attacking the surface of Ike. Now that our unarmed vehicles, our carrier on our um, carrier plane, the Ostrich Mark I, because it's such a big bird, um, can uh, now move in with impunity and uh, we'll be landing on Ike. So we're going to leave our carrier, just getting a little look now, the, uh, the transport plane and the carrier look somewhat alike with their kind of raised noses and long rectangularness. Now this transport plane is built to land anywhere. It can glide to a wheeled landing on high gravity atmospheric worlds and can of course leave with its uh, thermal ramjet engines and it also has a VTOL engine for uh, landing on airless moons such as Ike and I guess the moon. Anywhere we need to go we will be able to land. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty happy with this and it's quite, a, it's, quite an, it's quite an interesting plane. It has a front opening uh, cargo hatch which, which looks really cool. So we're lining up our orbits now, just getting lined up with this enemy base. There's three vehicles there, we only have two, so it could be a bit of a bit of a problem, but hopefully we'll be able to take it out with our superior weaponry, our superior pilots. Um, 
And yes, so we're just going to try and land out of gun range because this is an unarmored, unarmed carrier uh, carrier plane, so it can't really do any fighting, and the tanks inside won't be much good until they're outside of it. Uh, so yes, we're just coming into a landing now, sort of looking as if we're gliding, but we're actually we're using the VTOL engine. And the VTOL engine has, I have to say, works quite well on these low-gravity worlds. Um, not really powerful enough for... Uh, the likes of, you know, Gaia and Nebos and all of those kind of uh, atmospheric large planets, um, just because it doesn't have enough uh, thrust to weight ratio, because for every engine we have to carry a pebble bed nuclear reactor, which is a little annoying, um, it adds a lot of weight, but uh, clearly it's fine for this, and on bigger worlds we could just glide to a landing. Um, but on low gravity worlds we can escape very quickly with that VTOL engine, which is nice to know. And it touches down sort of perfectly and then rocks around a bit, but uh, it works out okay. Um, and then it is time to get the tanks out. So we open up the nose of the plane because, well, this is made for forward attack. Um, so the nose opens up because, I, I don't know, I wanted to do something interesting with this. Um, so anyway, we pull the wheel away so that the uh, ramp can touch the ground. And then it is time to bring out the tanks. We have brought ourselves two Manta Ray Mark I medium tanks. These have 200 millimeters of armor, a 50 caliber machine gun, and a 57 millimeter Bofors. Um, which is, well, an extremely effective, fast-firing weapon, and uh, hopefully will win us the day. The armor, of course, is uh, very thick and should hopefully deflect anything uh, anything that comes at us, and I'm pretty happy with these tanks. They're a little ugly right now, and um, they're just boxes with guns, but uh, they are pretty much prototypes. We haven't been doing much space warring of late since, um, well, since we haven't had the Kerbstein drive for a while, uh, that's allowed us to go interplanetary and start really branching out into the solar system after its discovery. Um, so yeah, we're a little bit, little bit newbie to this, but these seem to be doing okay. Um, they're well performing pretty well on in the low gravity of uh, Ike. I have had a few, caught of air a few times, but. Uh, Seems largely okay. Anyway, we've actually been able to get within two and a half kilometers fairly easily just uh, by, well, the hills were such that that was the only way we could do it. Which is good, because these uh, guns aren't particularly long range. But now it's time to go over the top, over the hill, and start facing our enemies. We see the flash of a large weapon down there, and a massive round slams into the surface quite near us. So there's one heavy tank with a fixed sort of howitzer. It can only uh, kind of turn a little bit so it's not a fully articulating turret. Um, and uh, we've actually opened up with our 50 cals. I guess that was because we were in the air and the vehicle thought we were planes or something. I don't know. But uh, now we've uh, switched to our bofers and they're putting some serious fire down. But we're taking a lot of fire. Looks like mostly 20mm fire from a couple of phalanx cannons and what appears to be 50 caliber fire from the big tank with the, uh, with the howitzer. I don't know what's happened to that but I have a sneaking suspicion. Um, that it's uh, rotated itself or moved itself because it's using a 105mm howitzer on Ike, which wasn't the best plan. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, yeah, so we're putting down fire now. We're taking a lot of hits from 20 mils, but they're only 20 mils, so we should be okay with the 200mm of armor. We should be alright. And yes, my uh, suspicions have been uh, confirmed when we switch to just see what's happening. Why isn't this firing its big gun? Turns out it was a 105mm howitzer mounted on the side of a tank um, on Ike, so it, it just can't hold itself down. It appears it does have, have some ore actually to try and help, but yeah, it just, I guess, you know, would work better on heavier, heavier worlds. And you can see when it fires, it just flips around, so there's no really helping it. But in the time we tried to write that tank to have a bit of a fair fight, because, you know, we want some good video footage, um, we've destroyed all the other tanks in that time. I try again to flick it around, I try and even make it get a good shot by turning guard mode off for a second, so it'll get it shot at the right time, but there's just no making that point the right way. So we're just gonna have to go and slaughter it as it tries to, uh, well, tries to fend us off with its little 50 cal. We're do much to our 57 millimeters, that is for sure. Yes, the uh, the light, the medium tanks over there with the 20 millimeter phalanxes didn't seem to put up much of a fight, and after a little bit of uh, suppressed fire, the heavy tank sort of flips into the air in the low gravity, and you can see it hauling there. Um, since it's flying, our bofers won't seem to attack it in the air, even though they're set to, so we just start hitting it with the 50 cals until I'm tired of that and want to shoot it myself with a bofers. Um, cannon <laughs> while it's falling because you know that'd be a cool shot just explode as it's in the air however apparently I'm not accurate enough to get enough shots to make it do that so we're just gonna have to chase it down we're getting our first good look at this uh, this facility now and it looks rather damaged as if some kind of ruined old base 
The uh, enemy tank just tumbling down the hill. Now we're making chase, just lighting it up with our uh, 50s. And when I get my hands on the guns myself, I will put some fire into the bottom of it and finish it off. Watch it pop ridiculously um, into the uh, into the sky. Clearly old technology, not made for this kind of combat. I guess not enough development has gone on on this forgotten base, on this forgotten moon, around this forgotten world. Um, but anyway, we finish off the pilot, just to make sure he's not going to get out with some kind of, some kind of, uh, I don't know, rocket launcher, some space weapon, a handheld mag cannon. Who knows what these crazy people have, but uh, yeah, probably not too much after they were abandoned by Kerbin after the nukings. Um, but uh, anyway, so yes, here we are. We have taken Ike, cleared the orbital space, and fetched ourselves a mining installation, although it might need some repair work. It seems it has been long forgotten about and fallen to ruin, and just had a small garrison to try and use Ike as a defensive moon to stop people getting anywhere near Duna. But clearly that has failed when it met the match of our glorious fleet, our glorious tanks, our rather nice transport plane, and everything else. So yes, today, very successful. Lost only a, a corvette to destroy a frigate, and uh, have started taking back Duna. This will be, uh, well, our first other world, starting our journey outward into the solar system to claim everything under the uh, under the banner of democracy and freedom. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, I hope you're lo enjoying the series so far. Again, if you uh, if you haven't seen Penguin's last video, that's out, and you should definitely go and watch that because, well. It's a series between me and him. Of course, we're not uh, doing combat with each other right now. Some people have been a little confused. Basically, these pirates and rogue nations, we, we place each other's enemies, which you submit in the Discord. Um, you submit ships in the Discord. We place them to, you know, do battle until we eventually meet and have a fight. That's that's how, just in case it wasn't clear. Sorry to break the fourth wall, but, you know. Um, and there were other questions, uh, if we're still taking ship submissions, absolutely we need uh, more and more ships and tanks and, you know, everything else for, uh, for, uh, for the pirates and rogue nations um, sort of thing. So submit them to mine and Penguin's Discord. If you submit them to my Discord, Penguin will fight them. If you There's a whole video on it, you can, you know. Anyway, but yes, I, like I said, I hope you have enjoyed this. Um, I hope you're looking forward to the rest of the series. Uh, this has been Chaos Booth Tape. I'll see you next time.